Another day, another loss to the transfer portal for Tennessee basketball. The unintended consequences of name, image, and likeness. The transfer portal, this new era of college athletics. This is the downside. We'll get into it here on a Friday, Locked On Balls. You are Locked On Balls, your daily podcast on the Tennessee Volunteers. Part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. Hey, good Friday morning, everybody. Welcome to Locked On Balls. I am your host, Eric Kane. Thanks so much for starting your weekend with us here on Locked On Balls, your unofficial start of the weekend, um, your tailgate, if you will, making Locked On Balls your first listen, your first watch, wherever you get your podcast. You can watch, listen, subscribe, follow us, download us, all that for free, wherever you get your podcasts. And of course, we're a part of Locked On Podcast Network, where it is your team every single day. Uh, busy show today. Jonas Adu, Transfer Portal. Get into that here in a matter of seconds. Spring game expectations. Defense. Of course, the orange and white game. Hello. It's tomorrow. Tell you what I'm looking for on the defensive side of the football. And then a monster baseball series at Lindsey Nelson Stadium. That is coming up this weekend as Tennessee hosts the defending national champion, LSU Tigers. All that and more here on a Friday. Locked on balls. Okay, so Jonas Adu enters the Transfer Portal. He will go through the NBA draft process. What that means, as that second part means, in, in terms of going through the NBA draft process, he'll go through this, you know, the, the competitions and, and the combine if he's invited and all that, and he'll get feedback. Um, a lot. It's very common. Rick Barnes encourages his players to uh, go and and kind of have those meetings. Not necessarily combine. I'm sorry, that's incorrect. Um, if I if I'm if I'm not mistaken, if you are. If you go to the combine and don't get dressed, I don't know, I, I can't remember, but nonetheless, you go and have meetings, you go and get feedback, you talk with NBA personnel, and, and they t- kind of tell you where you're slated in the draft if you are, and and you kind of get things to work on before you know entering the draft next year. And so it's very common practice around college basketball these days. Rick Barnes encourages his players to do that. He encouraged Jordan Bowden, you know, Grant Williams, you know, back in the day, and he's done done, done that with players since. Um, but that's just kind of a caveat. Going to go through the NBA draft process and all and all that. But he's entering the transfer portal. That's a big blow for Tennessee. I mean, it really is. You have a guy that was an All SEC player this year. Sure, his postseason was not great. In fact, in four postseason games, one game in the SEC tournaments and uh, one game or three games in the NCAA tournament, he uh, had 35 points and 25 rebounds. Um, so it didn't really translate, but he was a second team all SEC player this past season. He was a member of the SEC's all defensive team. He averaged career highs in scoring at 11 points per game, rebounding at seven points per game, defensive rebounding at four, offensive rebounding at three, um, blocks at almost two, steals at almost one, minutes played at a little over 25. He was fourth in the SEC in rebounding, third in the league in block shots. So anybody out there that tries to spin this, as, oh, well, he's replaceable. Oh, well, that's not a big loss. Just because they got sour grapes, he didn't play his best basketball in the NCAA tournament, they don't watch basketball, or they don't know basketball. Now, is this like losing, I don't know, Michael Jordan on your team? No, but it's it's a big deal. And you couple it with the earlier departure of Tobey Owaka, and it it just kind of makes matters worse. You now are looking at J.P. Estrella, who again? I went over his, you know, play in, in the back of his baseball card earlier this week. Um, you know, 15 minutes against the number one Purdue. A lot of reason for optimism. He was kind of that third big that worked in there a little bit this year, and that's all fine and dandy. That's great. But then you have him. You have Kate Phillips. Now you have six scholarships open, and Tennessee's going to have to try to get not one but two big men from the transfer portal. Um, it just kind of is where you are. It just kind of is what it is in terms of where you are in college athletics. And I don't want to speak for Toby Walker because I don't know the situation. I don't cover basketball the way I cover football and especially the way I cover baseball being on the beat every single day. Um, I watch and, and I have conversation with people who do and I'm around, I'm in those circles, but I'm not on the beat for men's basketball. So I'm not, and I don't know, I don't know Jonas Adu or Toby Walker or any of those guys personally. So I'm not going to speak and speculate on them, but I'll tell you, as I say that, let me say this, um, what this just kind of looks like is a money grab, right? And I, in fact, I've been told that it's not necessarily the case with Jonas, that the money situation with name, image, and likeness was kind of worked out, but that's what it looks like. 
And that's what a lot of this is. It's the downside of the era of college athletics that we're in right now. It's why a lot of people, old men shaking fist at clouds, right? Don't like where this is headed because the amateurism is no longer there. You're year to year players. You're not signing contracts. Nothing's holding you to a specific spot. And unlike football, where the roster size is so big, and baseball a little bit for that matter, man, you really feel it in basketball because you have, what, 13 spots? Just not great. It's not great at all. 12 spots. It's just not great at all. So it is unfortunate. Um, And it's stuff like this. And again, I haven't heard anything. I'm just talking. You and me. I'm just talking right now. It's stuff like this that's going to make Rick Barnes retire. I mean, it really is. Um, I don't want to say that they were blindsided by Jonas's decision to enter the portal because you you can never sit here and say you're blindsided in this day in college athletics, but I don't think it was something they were expecting. Again, an all-SEC player, second-team all-SEC, all-defensive team. Um, it's a really, really good player for you this year. But it's moves like this where you have 12 scholarship spots, okay? And sure, DJ Jefferson enters the portal. Freddie DeLeon enters the portal. That's expected. Toby Awaka, you don't really like it, but you kind of understand it because of the system that Rick Barnes plays, and he's still not going to get as many minutes as he wants. It's like, okay, I can kind of see that. But Jonas Hadou? Like, what are you doing? There's tons of rumors swirling around right now regarding Jemai Meshack as well. It is a complete roster reset for college base basketball each and every offseason. And it's stuff like this to where you got a ball coach like Rick Barnes that all he wants to do is mentor young men, lead them spiritually, try to help them grow up, and, oh, yeah, coach them hard in basketball, go win games, and, and see if you can go win a title. That's what Rick Barnes wants to do. Roy Williams retires. Mike Krzyzewski retires. You're seeing more and more of these coaches around the game that have been here so long that says, hey, I don't want to do this anymore. And I'm afraid that that's going to be Rick Barnes here soon. Not necessarily this week or next week or whatever. And I understand he's old, and I, all due respect, and I understand that it wouldn't be shocking for him just to retire anyway because he's been at it forever. But, man, if you want to keep coaching, but this stuff is holding you back, I mean, it sucks. It really does. So that's kind of what I wanted to get at here in this segment to begin this show. You can't speak in absolutes. And and, and I'm going coming down hard on this era of college athletics right now because this is the bad part about it. It really is. You have a team that went to the Elite Eight, the most decorated team in program history for the University of Tennessee. And you only have six players as of now in the time of this recording that are slated to come back. Six players. Of course, a couple of those guys went to graduation, you know, three fifth-year seniors. And then now four players have entered the transfer portal. <clears throat> it's unfortunate. It really, really is. Um, but you can't speak in absolutes. Social media is an absolute. It's this, this, or this. And if you don't agree with this, you're stupid. The portal giveth. Dalton Connect. Hendon Hooker. Lance Hurd. The portal taketh away. Tyler Barron, <laughs> um, Jonas Adu, other players that I'm not even thinking of right now. You can't take the good without recognizing the bad. And this is the bad right here. It truly is. So everybody that's frustrated, that's fine. Everybody that says the transfer portal is stupid, hate it, name, image, and likeness is stupid, hate it. Well, keep in mind, guys, Tennessee's also gotten some really, really good players across the board, Billy Amick and, and baseball. Um Hendon Hooker, again, Lance Hurd, uh, Dante Thornton, Chris Brazo. I mean, the list goes on and on and on. It just kind of is what it is. But it's just unfortunate because you have a team that was so good. And I didn't think that they were going to be as good as next year as they were this past year. But right now, and of course, it's to be continued. We'll see what they bring in and how they kind of assimilate this roster. But, man, I mean, this team's not going to be nearly as good. You got Sakai Ziegler. Right now, you got Jamon Meshack. You got, you got Kate Phillips that you like down the line. You got, of course, J.P. Estrella. You got Cam Carr that you like down the line. You got a couple other guys, and, and that's it. I don't think you – this is not how the transfer portal was supposed to go, if you will. But, again, you can't take the good without the bad, and this is the bad. It's, it's a frustrating day for Tennessee basketball. It truly is, in my opinion. Again, an Elite Eight team last year. 
and an all SEC player is going to leave. And again, I am not trying to speculate on on Jonas because even even I was told before recording this that the money situation that's not really it. I mean, no one's to know for sure, but that's not really it. But whatever reason it is, it just stinks. It really, really does. So Tennessee's got its work cut out for it for sure. Six scholarship player, six scholarship slots are now open. When Tobey left, you need to go get a big man. You need to get two big men now for sure. Uh, you still need a wing player. You need a shooter. You want some depth pieces. Maybe you take a flyer on a, on a high school kid late in the summer cycle. Um, but you got some work to do for sure. And it's unfortunate. It truly is. Now, I know I need to hit a break here, but someone asked me as well, does this mean Tobey Awaka could maybe come back? Tobey left because he wants to play. Because he wants to play. And now Jonas is gone. Could Tobey come back? In my opinion, it doesn't seem very Rick Barnes-ish to allow someone to come back like that. But I've been told it's not cut or dry. It's 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 not cut and dry. Um, we'll see what happens. I'm not saying that's happening. I'm not saying there's talks or anything. I'm just saying it wouldn't be shocking because nothing is shocking in this era of college athletics. So here's where you're at. What a difference a week and a half makes, right? I mean, you were sitting high, going to the Elite Eight. Things were great. And then, boom, life comes at you fast. And you have an all-SEC player in the transfer portal. Just is what it is. Hey, when we come back, we'll get you set for the orange and white spring game. Expectations for the defensive side of the football. That is coming up next. We continue on here with a Friday Locked On Balls. Want to see about our friends over at eBay Motors? Passion, drive, patience. The formula for winning championships is also what keeps your ride or die alive. eBay Motors has everything you need to maintain your vehicle and level it up to peak performance. Superchargers, roof racks, exhaust kits, LED headlights, and more. Whether you're into speed, power, or style, eBay Motors has got you covered. With over 122 million parts to choose from for your number one ride or die, you'll always find exactly what you're looking for. And with the eBay Guaranteed Fit, your part is guaranteed to fit your ride every time or your money is back because the eBay Motors, you're burning rubber, not cash. With all the parts you need at the prices you want, it's easy to make your car the MVP and bring home huge wins. Keep your ride or die alive at ebaymotors.com. Eligible bottoms only, exclusions apply. eBay guaranteed fit only available to U.S. customers. All right, guys, welcome back into your Friday edition of Lockdown Balls. Appreciate you guys for being here. I'm your host, Eric Kane. The orange and white game, that's coming up tomorrow. I don't know if you were aware. We've kind of taken football as a backseat here because basketball run, playing deeper in the tournament, transfer portal offseason, baseball is happening right now, Lady Vols head coaching search, all that and more. But yeah, spring football is going to conclude tomorrow with the annual playing of the orange and white spring game. So what am I looking for in this game? We talked offense lot yesterday. Let's talk defense today. Well, as I mentioned, that defensive line, about 14 players deep that you feel really good about who are going to play. Uh, just get in, get out, get some good work in. Uh, J- Joshua Josephs, I don't believe, is going to be playing because he's not been practicing this week, uh, dealing with a minor injury. So we'll you know keep tabs on him. More opportunities for a guy like Caleb Herring, who um, I think needs to take a step as he can, <coughs> excuse me, as he tries to um, you know be that third Leo and and that second Leo in pass rushing situations this year. Would love to see him, you know, get some work, and would love to see him, you know, kind of have a day there as as we continue to try to, you know, him having his coming out party as a Tennessee football player. It hadn't really happened yet because he didn't play an awful lot last year. So I'm looking for Caleb Herring up front, and you know, guys like Omar Norman Lott and Amari Thomas, Bryson Easton, and Elijah Simmons, David Hobbs, Jackson Moy. I mean, list goes on and on. Dominic Bailey, Tyree Weathersby, Tyree West, Jason Jenkins. Um, Looking forward to seeing that group because I think it is just a well-oiled machine. Let's go to linebackers. Linebackers, Keenan Peely, get in, get a, get a series or two, get out. Uh, need need to wrap him in bubble wrap. Make sure that he's ready to go for the uh, for the season ahead. Of course, Aaron Carter is not going to play in this game. Of course, um, Elijah uh, Herring is not going to play in this game. So it's going to be a whole lot of Jeremiah T. Lander, a whole lot of Jalen Smith, a whole lot of. Um, Edwin Spillman, a whole lot of Jordan Burns, Jordan Burns, I don't think here. A um, whole lot of Ben Bolton, a whole lot of Caleb Perry, a uh, whole lot of those guys. And I think this group at linebacker on the middle layer is going to be much, much better this upcoming season because for the most part, those guys were force fed last year by Brian Jean Marie. And they went through the lumps for sure, but they're better for it, much like the offensive line this spring. 
going through your lumps right now, baptism by fire, these young guys, the Vice and Langs, the Max Andersons, William Satterwhites, the Jesse Perrys, the Trevor Duncans, all those guys. But I think you're going to be better for it. And I think that's what these linebackers are kind of going through right now. Really excited to see Jeremiah T. Lander play. He's had a really, really good spring playing both Mike and Will. Um, and I want to see what Edwin Spillman does. Edwin Spillman from Lewis Academy, early enrollee, but because of the private schools in the, in the mid-state, uh, don't really allow those guys to leave school early and graduate early, but they kind of found a way around it. <coughs> Excuse me. Nonetheless, they got here, him and Caleb Beasley from, from Lewis Academy, they got to Tennessee like the day of spring practice, day one. So it's not like they were here working out in January. They got here day one. And unfortunately for Caleb Beasley, he he injured himself and he's been out the last couple of weeks. But Edwin Spillman doesn't really necessarily know what's going on right now. But boy, he's flying 100 miles an hour trying to make a play. And I love that. He's going to be a good player. So I'm excited to see a lot of Jeremiah T. Lander and a lot of Edwin Spillman in the orange and white game tomorrow on the defensive side of the football. Now let's get to the secondary. New look secondary, right? Danico Slaughter, Gabe Judy Lolly, Kamal Haddon, all gone. Cornerbacks who started last year. Uh, Jalen McCullough, Wesley Walker, gone. You've got uh, Tamari McDonald, gone in the star. Complete, fresh, brand new, turn the page. That's what you got. Now, sure, you got a couple of guys who have been there and have played a little bit. And Andre Turrentine, who I think is going to be a starter for this football team. And, and Jordan Thomas at the star position, who... I think it's going to be a starter for this football team. Ricky Gibson at one of the corners. But you also welcome in Jacoby Thomas from MTSU at safety. You welcome in Jermon McCoy from Oregon State at corner. You welcome in Jalen McMurray at, from Temple at corner. I'm excited to see what these transfers, truly, because when we go see practice and we get a little 20 minutes of viewing, 10 minutes of stretching, the other 10 minutes are doing circuits. So I don't really get to see an awful lot of defense when I'm at practice. I'm ready to see the secondary go fly around and play. And also, of course, Boo Carter. Backing up the star position right now, we'll see if they even do special teams tomorrow. I would assume that they won't or they won't be live in terms of hitting the return man. But I want to see how electric Boo Carter is. A lot of people are excited about him and saying that he's had a really, really good spring and he's going to be pushing for playing time in the defensive backfield as a true freshman, and I believe it. I want to see that in the spring game. So those are kind of the highlights of what I'm looking for, what I expect. MVP on the defensive side of the football tomorrow. Give me, I don't know. Give me, give me a defensive back that makes an interception. Give me Boo Carter. Why not? I think it'll be fun. Give me Boo Carter. So the Orange and White Spring Game that's coming up tomorrow. You can watch it on the SEC Network. I'm pretty sure uh, the Ball Radio Network will have it on, on on the radio as well. I'll be on the sideline. I'll be tweeting out some stuff. So. Uh, you can check it all out. And of course, we'll recap it all on a Monday locked on balls. Uh, before we get into segment number three and get you set for Tennessee and LSU baseball this weekend, I do want to make mention real quick. Um, how you finish will determine if Tennessee will go and get a, a running back via the transfer portal. We will see if that happens. Kind of been slow out of the gate this week. Not been a whole lot of talk about that. They're evaluating Deshaun Bishop, Khalifa Keith. Peyton Lewis is not st- uh, is not practicing right now because he had a cleanup surgery. But they love him as an early enrollee and love him as a running back. Could be potentially RB3 next year. But Cam Selman, we know, is out right now with the shoulder. And he's going to be pushing it to try to get back the first week or two of the season. You need some depth and some quality backs that you feel good about behind Dylan Sampson, who's going to be your lead back. So how Deshaun Bishop, who I talked about yesterday, and Khalifa Keith, how they finish spring and how they perform in the orange and white spring game tomorrow We'll determine if Tennessee is going to go and get a running back via the transfer portal. But let me say this on that. It's easy to sit back as a fan, as an observer, and say, well, look, that guy's in the transfer portal. He's a running back. He played He played a little bit. Go get him. Just go get him. Go throw money at him and get him. Remember, guys, it's a business. It's not professional sports, but it's not amateur sports anymore. It's a business. Think about this. Does it make business sense to go and spend – $100,000 on a third string running back that might only be here for a year. The answer is heck no. And I'm not saying that's what this guy or this guy or this guy is asking for, but th- those are some price ranges out there. It's like th- that doesn't make sense at all. You've got players who have entered the transfer portal who are obviously not happy with their playing situation or are not happy with their name and the likeness situation with the collective at their current school and are going to seek a bigger deal. I don't know about other schools. I can't speak on that. And, of course, I don't know the financials of, of, of what Tennessee does and, and everything in that, in that realm. I don't pretend to be an expert. But what I can tell you 
is you're not going to see Tennessee go out and pay for a third string running back that will put them back six figures. I can promise you that. So it's not as, you know, cut and dry. It's not as black and white as saying, oh, that guy's on the portal, go get him. It's a business. It's a business. Remember that it's a business. And that can be said for any sport. That can be said for any position. And um, that can be said for each individual case. It's a business. you got to evaluate it that way. All right, when we come back, Tennessee baseball set to host the defending national champion, LSU Tigers at Lindsey Nelson Stadium. I'll get you set for that when we return right here on Lockdown Balls. I want to say about our friends over at Game Time. Game Time right now. Put in that promo code Locked On College, and you're going to get twenty dollars off your first purchase. Locked On College, twenty dollars off your first purchase. Game Time. It is the app that I use all the time. I know a lot of you guys have been using it as well because I've told you about it and maybe you heard about it and you've told me about their stories. The best price guarantee is probably one of my favorite things. I'm always trying. I mean, we all are, right? We want to save money. And when I'm going to an event, not just sporting event, it could be concert, it can be comedy shows, it could be monster truck rallies, all that good stuff happening in the T- TBA and the FCC, right? Thompson Bowling Arena, Food City Center. Come on, give it the lingo here. I can buy tickets to those events by using the Game Time app. But also, I will go look for cheaper tickets all the time, and I can never find cheaper tickets anywhere else outside than the, the Game Time app. And if you do, they've got the best price guarantee. They're, they're going to make it right for you. I promise you that. Go check it out. Safe, secure, easy to use app. Download the Game Time app today. Flash deals, zone deals, last minute tickets, all that and more. Baseball season happening. You can buy Major League Baseball tickets on the Game Time app as well. All that and more. It's over at the Game Time app. Locked on College, put in that promo code for $20 off your first purchase. Locked on College, L O C K E D O N C O L L E G E. Locked on College for $20 off. Download Game Time today. Last minute tickets, lowest price, guarantee. We continue on with the Friday edition of Locked on Vols. When we return. Big one this weekend at Lindsey Nelson Stadium. The number four Tennessee Volunteers are set to welcome LSU, the defending national champions. All right, don't, again, kind of like last week with Auburn, don't get too fooled by the record, okay? LSU, 3-9 and nine record in SEC. That's not good. I'm not trying to act like it is. 22-12 and 12 overall. I'm not trying to act like that this is a, a great team um, that just doesn't feel like playing and losing games. There's still talent on that roster. Still a lot of guys that won a national championship that played roles for the Tigers last year who were still in that dugout, who were still in the bullpen. It just hasn't translated yet so far. And remember, Tennessee was 5-10 and 10 this time in SEC play last year. 5-10. and 10. A lot of people were counting out Tennessee as well. But nonetheless, LSU comes to town. Two teams that don't like each other. Two programs that don't like each other. Two head coaches that, in my opinion, don't like each other. And Jay Johnson and, of course, Tony Vitello. It's going to be a big one. Of course, only 10,000 get into Neyland Stadium for the Orange and White game, but there's going to be concerts going on in the Ball Village, tailgates, all that and more to kind of tide you over for what's going to be happening at Lindsey Nelson Stadium that afternoon, or that evening. And I'm excited for it. Um, huge series coming up, and uh, we'll kind of get you uh, set with the, with the main storyline. It's who's going to pitch for Tennessee? Tony Vitello turned in his projected uh, pitching rotation for this weekend to the SEC on Thursday. TBA on Friday night, Drew Beam on Saturday night, and Xander Seacrest on Sunday. AJ Causey, of course, if you follow along with Tennessee baseball and you've listened uh, to some of uh, my, my podcasts, of course, the Porch Podcast over at VolQuest.com, you know AJ Causey struggled the last two weekends. And so Tony Vitello earlier in the week said that um, he, w- he wasn't going to tell anybody who he's going to start on Friday, and they've kept it really, really close. I've been poking around all week long trying to figure it out, and of course, at the time of this recording, I still don't have a clue kind of what they're I still don't know for certain what their plan is going to be for Friday. Um, I could see A.J. Causey still starting. I could see Aaron Combs coming in and opening and then giving the ball to A.J. Causey. Same with Stamos and then to Causey in a piggyback role. I could see maybe Nate Sneed starting, but they love him in the role that he's currently in. Um, I don't know. We'll see. I think A.J. Causey is still going to pitch this weekend. Don't get me wrong. It just might not be in that starter role. Um, but that's the biggest storyline coming into the weekend. What will Tennessee do with the ball on Friday night? What's interesting with LSU on its side, LSU is holding Luke Holman, their ace, until Saturday. Setting up Drew Beam versus Luke Holman at Lindsey Nelson Stadium. It's going to be a really, really, really good game to kind of cap off a fun Saturday at, at, on campus at, over on the hill. Um, Luke Holman, we know that name because Tennessee was very much in it with Luke Holman last year as he transferred over from Alabama. It was Tennessee or it was LSU. And I don't care what anybody at Mississippi State says, it was never going to be the Bulldog. Just one. Just one. You know? Um, but he picked LSU. 
He did, and and um, he's been really good for LSU. Six and one, a two hundred one ERA. He's been roughed up twice in SEC play. Um, let's see here. Five runs, two earned off ten hits, and four innings and two thirds at Mississippi State to begin <coughs> SEC play. And then he was tagged for six runs, four earned off four hits, five and two thirds last weekend against Vanderbilt. Though he still got the win in that game. But outside of those two starts, he's been solid. 30, 34 innings and a third, four four runs, 14 hits. Um, on the season, he struck out 71 batters and walked only 13. Luke Coleman's a good pitcher, and I don't know why LSU's wanting to throw him on Saturday considering the, the issues that Tennessee's had on the mound each of the last couple of Fridays. feels like the best opportunity for LSU to get a game would be on Friday, but that's, you know, he, 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 you know neither here nor there is what it is. Um, the bats. Of course, no Paul Skeens anymore. We know that on the mound. Dylan Cruz is no longer there. He's still got Tommy White. Still got Jared Jones. Tommy White's coming over from NC State two years ago. Third baseman, hit second in the order. Second year in Baton Rouge now. Leads the team with a 324 batting average. Um, he's second in RBI or second home runs with 11. He's driven in 29, which is third on the team. Jared Jones, he's the uh, first baseman. Hits three or four in the order. Um, leads, the, leads the team with uh, 14 home runs, 34 ribbies. He's hitting 304 as well, so that's not that's not bad in the middle of the order there. Um, Steven Millam hitting at the bottom of the order, but he has like the second best batting average on the team at 314. Um, Hayden Travinsky, really solid, hitting a shade under 300 at 298, eight home runs, 31 ribbies. Leadoff hitter Mac Bingham, 298 clip, eight home runs, 23 ribbies. Uh, again, the offense is fine. It's not like Auburn's, and it's not like George's for sure. But it's fine. It's eighth in the SEC in average. Um, LSU is also eighth in the SEC in ERA, kind of right there, smack dab in the middle a little bit, or first half, or first notch of the bottom half of the uh, the conference because the conference is still at fourteen teams. Sixteen teams is next year. Um, so this is just a team that's okay, and it's very much underperformed so far this season. Uh, transfer portal addition from Xavier, Justin Lower. 2-0 record on the season, but a 6.46 ERA. Not great. Opening day starter on the mound, Thatcher Hurd, who's been dismissed. He was demoted to Sunday, and then he's been in the bullpen each of the last couple of weeks. 1-4 record, a 6.59 ERA on the season. Just a lot of guys who have been underperforming for LSU so far this year. But all that, throw it out the window. These two teams don't like each other. These two teams are really, really talented. These two teams will have several, several draft picks. Uh, come, come come June when the Major League Baseball you know draft is happening. And it's going to be some really good baseball. In my opinion, much like you've seen so far in SEC play with Tennessee, just not enough pitching to keep up with this lineup. And so as the weekend goes on, games two and three, these teams run out of pitching, and Tennessee just keeps hitting and hitting and hitting. And Tennessee's able to win games two and three of the series in convincing fashion and take the series overall, despite how frustrating or how shortcoming a Friday game can be. And we've seen that the last couple of weeks for, for Tennessee baseball. Now, the difference here is you have Luke Coleman pitching on Saturday. And not to say that Tennessee can't beat Luke Coleman because they can, but they are having their ace throw on Saturday. So it's a little bit different this time. Puts a little bit more pressure on Tennessee to win game one for sure. So I think it's going to be a really good series. I just like the way Tennessee swings the bat, leads the SEC in average. Um, you know, tops, you know, tied with Georgia, I believe, entering the weekend with the home runs. Blake Burke is tied for the nation lead with 19 uh, doubles. It's a really, really good hitting team. And it's going to be put to the test, though, for sure. Tennessee and LSU at Lindsey Nelson Stadium. Tennessee has won three straight Southeastern Conference Series to begin, or three of four to begin um, league play. Of course, it dropped the... Uh, SEC series opening weekend at Alabama, but since then it's one against Ole Miss, Georgia, and Auburn, all in two games to one fashion. But it's getting tough here. You got LSU this weekend. You're on the road at Kentucky, and Kentucky is red hot right now. You got Florida. You got Vanderbilt down the line. Missouri, who just swept a team, uh, swept Florida last weekend. They're down the line as well. It's uh, it's never easy in the Southeastern Conference, and even teams that look easy on paper, like technically LSU does this year. It's not going to be easy. I can promise you that. Tennessee and LSU, huge huge series coming up this weekend, and we'll recap it all along with the Orange and White Spring game on a Monday, Locked on Balls. Appreciate you guys for being here. Thanks so much for starting your weekend with us here on Locked on Balls. 
making us your first listen, your first watch. Um, tough luck about Jonas to do. It is. But you can't take the positives of the transfer portal without recognizing the negatives. And this is a negative for sure. Um, whether he just doesn't like playing in the system, he's frustrated with the way that uh, he was benching in the NCAA tournament. I don't know what the case is. But Jonas Adu going through the NBA draft process, but also entering his name in the transfer portal. Uh, we'll see how all this plays out. We'll see how Tennessee basketball responds. All that and more, and we'll cover it right here on Lockdown Balls. Can't thank you guys enough. Appreciate you guys. If you're going to the Orange White game and you see me, say hello. If not, stay safe. Enjoy your weekend, everybody. This is Lockdown Balls.